Ordinary People. I'm Ginny Mesrell. I'm a fourth generation witch who practices traditional magic because I learnt it from my family and my friends and my coven and varying other people throughout my life. You know, my mother taught me how to dye my shoelaces and read tea leaves. So I think it's completely and utterly normal, which possibly explains today's video. So far, we've only really dealt with sort of light subjects. So now I want to get a bit more mm, in depth with you. So you need to bear with me, suspend disbelief just for the length of this video, as I wish to talk about a spiritus petri, or to you and me, a rock spirit. So what exactly is a spiritus petri? Well, it is one of the guardian spirits or elemental spirits of the earth. Now, there are many and varied different types of spirits of the earth. For example, there'll be an animal spirits, uh, like the king of the eagles, who would be the guardian spirit of all of the eagle genus throughout his domain. Now, the spiritus petri, the rock spirit, some of the oldest spirits on this planet. They're pipped at the post, maybe, by the sun, the earth and the moon. So the spiritus petri was made as the rock that it inhabits was made. And they are pretty damn old, millions of years old, in fact. So there is another type of rock spirit, which I will go into because you need to know about these as well. So we have the Spiritus Petri, which was made when the rock was formed by Mother Earth. And then you have a Spiritus Petri who inhabits a rock when they were trying to hide. So many, 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 many millions and millions of years ago, some not quite quite so good spirits inhabited this earth and this is way before man way when Pangea you know the single continent was existing together and these spirits were hunted down and chased out because they didn't belong here and they were causing problems and so they decided to hide from their seekers who were the other guardian spirits of the earth and they would hide in the gemstones of the earth so knowing that you know one day they would be mined from the earth and come forth so they could wreak their mischief. Now you probably think, oh gosh, you're so stupid. What is this? It's such a load of rubbish. But actually, you do know one of these um, Spiritus Petri very well indeed. And in fact, if you haven't already watched my video on it, I suggest you do, and I shall put it here because it is the story of the Hope Diamond. And the Hope Diamond is very much inhabited by one of these beings who wreak mischief and havoc upon the earth. The rock spirits that inhabit the gemstones rather than those that were formed when the gemstones were formed have a different style of energy to them. Um, we might call it negative or evil, depending on your viewpoint. Um, it's different to ours is my personal opinion about this. And these rock spirits can have power over people. And so you might come across them in such things as a ring, say a gemstone, you know, this amethyst isn't inhabited by any rock spirit, but this is the sort of thing that they might take on or might go into. Often, as in the case of the Hope Diamond, they were placed in the foreheads of statues of the gods in the Asian continent, often considered the source of power for that deity, for that statue. It is a pretty good source of power after all. However, mischief always requires an outlet, and being in the statue doesn't really give you the opportunity to cause mischief. So often they were stolen or, you know, suggested that they should be stolen by other people, and hence they were able to wreak their havoc throughout history. There are many known, you know, tales of old throughout history in every culture will talk of gemstones with this dark power within them. I mean, luckily for us, you will probably not come across one in your average gemstone set ring. Um, for example, like this, here I have an amethyst set into a ring and it does not contain any dark spirit, thankfully. Otherwise, I don't think I'd wear it. So the good news is that these gemstones and their evil possessors aren't very many of them, so it's very unlikely that you are going to find one in your lifetime. So that, well, that's good, isn't it? 
But the one I want to concentrate on at the moment is the sort of natural ones, the spiritus petri, those ones that are in, formed as the rock is formed, as the rock that they inhabit is formed. They are one with the rock. Now these spiritus petri, you will find as gemstones, and they are often in rock crystal or in limestone, sandstone, those ones with quartz in them. They often have a spiritus petri in them. If you think of the blue stone of Stonehenge, actually I don't know if they've got, I haven't asked about that. Hold on, I'll get back to you. Let me just go and have a quick ask. I have just investigated and Stonehenge does have a spiritus petri within the rock faces there. These spiritus petri are neither good nor evil, they just are. But they're very black and white. They understand the difference between good and evil, but they understand it in a much more logical and analytical form than us humans. So a rock spirit is very, this is this and this is this. A bit like Mr. Spock from Star Trek. Strange. Step by step, I've made the correct and logical decisions. They think logically. They are, and so they're very useful when you're trying to find the truth about something. These spiritus petri are therefore extremely useful because they can't lie. There is always a black and white element of truth in them. They don't understand human emotions. They don't understand the emotion of joy or happiness or, you know, fun or any of these. But they do understand whether it is right or it is wrong. It's, they understand the moral issues for some reason. Well, right and wrong, you know, whether it hurts somebody. Because, I mean, that's pretty easy, actually. I know there's a lot of grey witches and wizards out there who think that all magic is good. But, you know, that's not me. I do not believe in harming someone through magic. Apart from the fact that you don't know what forces you've put out into the world. And they often, because you are the perpetrator of them, will come back to you. This is where the do something bad and it will come back to you seven times over comes from. So, the Spiritus Petri is extremely useful as a divining tool. So if you have a pendulum or some other form of divination in a rock, with a rock spirit in it, they are absolutely brilliant at helping you on that because they cannot tell a lie. Their viewpoint is not coloured by human emotions because they don't understand those. <laughs> you know, they're a rock for God's sake. <laughs> they, don't, they, don't have a, they don't have a clue what human emotions. And would you if you were a rock? No, I don't think I would. <laughs> Hello, Mr. Rock. Do you understand happiness? No, he doesn't. Anyway, it's from this that I actually have a spiritus petri in this pendulum. This one is about a year old, so it's pretty new. And I believe it to have a rock spirit with it. I interact with this rock spirit on a daily basis. Um, I ask it questions as soon as I wake up and throughout the day I use it as part of my practice and I use it when I'm planning my videos, for example. So I, and I enjoy the interaction with this particular rock spirit and pendulum. And I trust it. I trust the judgment that I get from it. So the reason why I'm making this video actually is because I lost this pendulum yesterday. Now I lose my pendulums on a regular basis, but it's, and it's so boring because, you know, you get used to a pendulum, you like them, you get on with them, you find that energy very in tune with yours. But I particularly like this one. And I lost it yesterday morning and I spent yesterday pretty much clearing up my bedroom, which is where I last had it, looking for the pendulum. You know, I changed my bed, I went into all the corners, I looked at all the rubbish underneath my bed, I cleared it all up and I could not find it anywhere. I literally looked in every part of it and I was sort of stumping around quite cross. I mean, so I woke up this morning and I was trying to find it again and I couldn't find my pendulum anywhere. And so out loud I said, Rock spirit, will you please come back to me, make yourself known. I then got up, I made my bed, I cleared up my room, I tidied away all the clothes from yesterday. I then walked out of my bedroom and into my daughter's room and had a couple of minutes chat with her to the effect of get out of bed, it's time to get up, or words to that effect, lovely morning chat. And then walked back in through the door of my bedroom and found this pendulum lying on the floor in front of me as I opened the door. Now, it wasn't there 
five minutes previously. Nobody had been in and out of my bedroom since then, no animal and no human, no husband anyway. He was out. And so I was a little surprised. So I did ask the pendulum and he said, well, I can move through time and space. And so because you had lost me, I came back for you. <laughs> that is my rock spirit. Go, do go and look at my Patreon site, which I'll put down here because there's lots of little extras on there for you and you can come and join our covenant. I do hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, I'll see you in my next one.